everyone. Now I've got a bit of hands-on work to do this time. I'm gonna install a couple of these Wi-Fi network adapters into a piece of PVC pipe, like this one. Once I cut it down, I'm gonna put them in there, if you get what I mean, and st I can stick this on the roof, just so I can do some packet captures. Now, I did a bit of a test with that first, just to see if they still make it through that thing, and they do, they make it through that better on the roof than they do just down here on the ground level through the brick walls and that. So I'm gonna cut that down to size, put these in there, mount it, and eventually have a Raspberry Pi up in the roof, you know, connected to it, so then I can connect to that. So first things first, I'll cut this down, get that ready, and then I'll be on the roof first thing in the morning before it gets too hot. Okay, what I might do first is glue this to that, even though I don't think that's really ever gonna go anywhere. In fact, I won't glue it, fuck it. I'm just gonna put them up the uh, pipe here. And this cable, the USB extension lead's only like one and a half meters long. So I'll just put them in there a bit and you know, cut this down to size, put the cap down here, and then put that on the roof and then feed these into the roof. They should have enough length on them to go to the Raspberry Pi. All right, I'll take the cables out before I cut the thing. And I'll just go about there. Just a bit less than halfway. It's only one meter, so this is less than a meter. Just something to protect it from the elements, really. That'll do. There it goes. You back here, fuck you. Okay, here's my pipe, the rough end, I'll just put the cap over there to make it neat. And there it is. Technically, that's a radome now. Radome is the thing that protects antennas. So, this will go up there. I'll just maybe glue something down the bottom to stop it falling out, maybe, because depending on how I mount it under the tiles, like with the cables, it might slip out. So, I might put a drop of hot glue in there which means I might as well glue the adapters at this point. All right, now this is gonna be as rough as guts. I don't care, just wanna get a bit of glue on there. Other side. I've done this before with adapters. It just helps keep them together. If you can't see that, don't worry, neither can I. Hot glue. All right, that should, do, that should do the trick. All right, it's just after five o'clock and I've just got up. <laughs> it's actually a bit cool still, but um, it's gonna get hot. But anyway, I'll get this done before it gets hot. I've got the light. I'll just get make a start, slap this thing on the roof. All right, I'm up here and I've got this old antenna that I made that I didn't really use. So I'm gonna take that off and that's where this one's gonna go. What did I do for that one? I had some tape at the bottom of that, but I just don't care anymore. So this one here has to have, it's not gonna go as high obviously. It's just there with enough cable to get inside. That's about where it's gonna be. All right, down here is about as high as that's gonna go. So I just gotta get the cables in and get down. It's funny, I've never noticed this before. This big stream that's clean on the tiles from where the water would come down all the way down there. There we go. Right. I can piss off. And these can go down there. In the hole. So they're just going down into the roof. Same as the other one. And I'll put the tile back. Hopefully there. How much have we got? There's enough. There's enough to swing a raspberry pi off in the roof. So that's where the cables go into the roof, come out of the roof. Here's my dodgy little setup here on the mast, same mast as the disc cone there. And uh, got it done before the sun came over the horizon there. So I'm gonna head down now and do the in the roof part. All right, it's up past, well, 20 to six, and I've got that done. 
So I'm going to have a cup of tea before I do the in the roof part, which is just plugging the Raspberry Pi in here and it's powered off PoE, so just, that's going to dangle in the air up there. But I wanted to get the first bit done, so that's done and I'll just get around to this next. This is what's actually going up there. The Raspberry Pi in a heatsink case here and PoE splitter. So it's powered off PoE, so I can turn it off when I'm not using it so it doesn't just sit there and roast. And these are the adapters. It's just something cheap I got off AliExpress, but it can do 6 gigahertz up to 80 meg wide channels. So that's what's going up. Right, so I'm up in the roof and there's plenty of length on those cables. You can see where I poked them through. So I'm just going to slap the Raspberry Pi to that and let it dangle. All right, so I'm plugging these in the USB 2 port because for some reason it doesn't work as well in the USB 3 port. It misses frames and it's just a mess. So one day I'll figure that mystery out. Anyway, USB port 2 it is. Let's plug that in and I've got the Cat5 dangling down. The whole thing's dangling down. And that's it there. I'll actually just tighten that up a bit. That's just swinging in the air. Now I'll go plug it in at the switch. All right, you can all laugh at this, but I don't care. This thing, it's not turned on yet, but that's it, in the air, not resting up against anything, and just dangling off the PoE splitter there. Okay, now back down at the desk, I've got this interface that I made, which I designed for a mobile phone, but anyway. So you can see that I've got the two adapters here, and I can just select a channel, maybe I want 1, 6, and 11, or all 2.4. Dwell time, you know, how long it wants to spend on each channel, and set that, that'll start that adapter scanning those channels. And then I can do a capture of, well, everything, or just the management control or data frames, you know, and split it up how I want. But what I can also do is on the second adapter, maybe set five gig on those with 500 milliseconds dwell. And like I can capture there, that's easy enough. So that'll capture, blah, blah, blah. Then I can download that capture. Or I can just do select which adapters, like both of them, because only two adapters in this case, and then save that as one file. Maybe I just want management, maybe I just want data or whatever. So let's say you've got a, a network on channel 11 in 2.4 and channel, I don't know, 104 in five gig. Obviously the dwell time is not relevant when there's only one channel. And then I can just save them together as one capture. Now, of course you can analyze that capture in Wireshark, but I've made it easy for myself with T-Shark. I've automated the way I do a bunch of things. I've got my little interface here. So this is a house up the street. So I know the guy and um, I know he's got a house full of crap and you can pretty much see it all here. So, you know, that's his amplifier there. All just pumping out into the air. Look at this bloke. He's got his Amazon Alexa fucking things. But his storage box here, Western Digital Technologies. I'll be another one. Yeah, his amp. Oh, and his dodgy camera. It's all there. Just to pluck out of the airwaves. Okay, so that's all done now. And it's just something that I can use for doing packet captures when I'm setting up tools rather than just relying on what's in my house. I can listen to something a bit more interesting around the neighborhood. So anyway, it's still only mid morning and it's already hot as hell. So that's the time to do it is, you know, at first light. So anyway, that's that. So till next time, take it easy.